All right, hello everyone. So I discovered a new game. It's actually an early access game called Glitch Space, obviously. It's the title. Um, so it's actually an early access, and I just found it on Steam randomly, and uh, figured I'd give it a shot. It's, it's a weird puzzle game about visual programming, which sounds like a terrible idea, but it's actually a really interesting game. I've pl I played through a little bit of it. And you have, I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. So, you know, it's telling me to move, why not? It's kind of got a cool portal thing as well. So anyway, that's, that's not actually part of the game. That's just there. It's kind of cool. So anyway, it's telling me I can jump and all that generic stuff. We already know how to play video games. Oh, also, I already fell to my death. The jumping is really weird because it always moves in the direction you are looking. So like, if I jump forward and then look left, I can, you know, you know what I mean. I can jump up there. It's really weird, but other games have that, but it's way more accurate in this game, so it kind of throws you. So anyway, we get to uh, right-click on this, and we get to make some adjustments to how this block is programmed, which is really, really cool. And it actually took me a minute to figure out how to play this initially. But uh, basically, what you have to do is tell it how this block needs to be programmed. So I just told it to elongate itself, basically. It actually took me forever to figure that out. The f I just did it again. It took me forever to figure that out the first time I played it. But yeah, it's actually really interesting. Did I just go back? I just went back. It's okay. We're, we're, going, we're going this way now. There we go. Alright, so... I actually initially only even... I'm going to keep doing that. I initially only looked at this game because it reminded me a lot of Mirror's Edge, uh, specifically the DLC maps in Mirror's Edge. But uh, no, this game is an ar awesome art style. So anyway, I guess I'm supposed to go through this portal. Here we go. So when, if you can tell, it's kind of see-through. That means I can fall through it. Obviously, we need it to be a platform. So we need to enable collisions on here. And we need to set that to true. Right, so it's a programming terminology. If you don't know that much about programming, this is going to be confusing. If I set it to false, obviously, enabling uh, collisions being false, it's not going to, it's still, I'm going to fall right through it, right? We want to enable collisions. Set that to true. Let me make a little adjustment there. It becomes non see through, and I can walk across it, which is really cool. I actually really like this game. It's a, it's a weird kind of puzzle game that I've never seen before. It's a really unique style. I hope they do something cool with it. So now this block is in my way. I need to actually walk through it. So I'm going to right click. This time it says disable collisions. Once again, it needs to be set to true. Before it was enable collisions, now it's disable collisions. So once again, we're going to set that to true. This false stuff needs to get out of here. So we'll go ahead and replace the false with a true, and it becomes see-through, we can walk through it. And there's another one. Okay, what do we got here? All right, disable collisions, this one, it's the exact same thing, actually. I don't even know why they would do that again, but there you have it, it's the exact same. All right, this one, we need to get this main object to be set to true. Now it's actually having me pull up the enable collisions thing, so we're gonna go ahead and just connect all the different pieces. So if you don't know what I'm doing, it's this main object is referring to the object that I'm looking at. And we want it to have collisions enabled. That's a trait of it, right? Whether it's disabled or enabled, that's one trait of this object. And we can adjust those traits with trues and falses and all kinds of other terminology that I'm sure we'll get into later. I don't love the art style of this game. Go through this portal here. Ooh. I didn't actually realize it had like a mirror image thing. That's kind of cool. Alright, once again, disabling con uh, collisions. Alright, so... Interesting. So, false not... This is actually as far as I've gotten. I haven't tried going any farther than this. Uh, not is going to probably reverse the effects of false. So, if I do something like this... I'm hoping this works. Yes, so it reverses the effects, making it no longer false, but true. I'm glad that worked. I'm, I'm betting they'll have me do something. Ooh! 
I start with a clean slate this time. So we're going to want this main object. This is the object we're affecting. We're going to pick physics. We want it to have collisions. Right now it doesn't. And input moving. Well, let, let me just toy around here. What's this do? Moving. Oh! Okay. So I guess when I'm moving, it enables collisions, and when I'm standing still, it doesn't. So I have to make sure I don't stop. Actually, I'm going to try stopping. Yeah, I just fall right through it. That's awesome. Okay, so it, it knows that I'm moving, and then it adjusts itself accordingly. Interesting. This one's probably going to do the exact same thing. So some of these are locked, and I can't adjust them, so I kind of have to work around what's already here. Let me just see what we got here. Moving, yeah, so we're probably going to do something with that again. Instead of setting it to true, we'll set it, well, or maybe not. Can I move this up here and then this right here? Does that work? It does not work. Hold on. Moving. Oh, false. Okay, so we is there a knot? There is a knot. Look at that. So I'm going to say, when I'm moving, it is not false, thus making it true, but only while I'm moving. I really hope this... If you don't know programming, this may not make any sense to you at all, and I apologize for that. I, I've kind of been into game programming for a part of my life. I find it interesting. So there's that. Alright, what do we got here? What's this puzzle? What's our input? Grounded. Oh, hold on. I have to jump over this. Okay, so when I'm when I jump in the air, theoretically, yes, it becomes... It, it loses its mass, but only while I'm in the air. That's very interesting. I like that. What do we got here? Okay, hold on. This is a lot. Hold on. We've, we've got a lot here. I'm, I'm in my head. I'm working my way through this. Okay. True... And, okay, so this, so, okay, so right now what it says is if both this is true and this is false at the same time, it will allow collisions. That can't be the case. They can't be both true and false at the same time. So I'm going to have to go in here and I'm going to have to change them both to become the same thing. And actually I'm an idiot because they both needed to be true, didn't they? I'm about 90% sure. Make them both true. And there we go. Now we can walk on it. There's our collider. Holy crap. This is going to be quite the puzzle game. Pretty quick. Right now it's not that hard. Alright. False or true. So either or. Allow collisions. We want it to be false and false. Right? Or false or false, yeah. Because the, the thing with, with that one was, um, basically, if either one of those were true, if anything was... Okay, so if anything is false, it allows collisions. Wait, so isn't that the opposite? Hold on. If either of these are false, it should allow collisions, meaning that this should be collided with, right? Hold on. I know I passed it, but hold on. I feel like I, I just... If these were both true... Hmm. See, that's the thing that's bugging me, though. Oh, well, now that says true. So, hold on. If I change this back to false... See, it changes... It changes... I, maybe I don't understand it properly. We're just going to move on. We're just going to move on. All the terminology. I don't even understand what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Well, I probably can't... Hold on. Can I adjust that from here? Yes, I can. Stretch object. Okay, hold on. Ten. So is that the amount I stretch it by, or... That didn't do anything. Okay, hold on. We're going to have to... True. Yes, so we got to set that to true... I'm doing weird Chris. Whoa. Alright, so that scaled it up. I was kind of expecting it to do like a height scaling, but I guess that may come later. Being able to adjust it by width or by height instead of Oh, crap. Let's go. Can't actually jump across this. Okay. 
So we need collisions. All right, so allow collisions needs to be set to true right now. Oh, so these two numbers need to be equal. Okay. These two numbers are equal. It will allow collisions. There we go. Math. Oh, God. Please don't make me do math. That's going to make this game way worse. <laughs> we don't want that. All right, so if these two are equal, so we need them to be... 5 plus 5 is the only way we can do this. So this needs to be 5. We need to, okay, add. Bam, bam, that makes that 10, thus making these two equal, if that makes any sense. I really hope this makes sense. Jesus. <laughs> this game could so easily be confusing. Okay. We want to, okay, so we want to disable collisions that only happens if two inputs are equal. Right now we've got a hundred. We've got to make that map multiply. Hold on. Five by five. Okay, hold on. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a couple things here. So five. No, get out of here. Numbers five. Five so that's 25 and then we're actually gonna have to do the same thing again over here this is a little complicated this is just a little complicated we're gonna do it again and that'll make that 25 and then what we actually want to do is have another multiplication by two. Oh my lord Uh, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No. That's not the way we want to do it. We need... We're doing this wrong. This needs to be 5 by 2. Making it 10. Right? And then 10 by 10 multiplied will equal 100. Thus making these two numbers equal. Oh my gosh, we did it. Wow, I am just, my mind is, is gonna hurt after playing this game, I just know it. It's really fun though, it's actually really fun. This may be a game that's better to play by yourself, I don't actually know. Oh, a clock, oh my goodness, well that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, okay, so what do we got? Allow collisions, we need that to be set to true. I don't actually know... We just remove that? No, that's not gonna do it. How can we do this? Do I just have to like jump a whole bunch? Please tell me I don't just have to jump a whole bunch. I don't think that's what I'm supposed to do at all. No, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Okay. How do I get this? You can't put an input on clock, because that is an input. Interesting. Allow collision. Hmm. Clock is the only option I have. There's nothing else I can do. Like, the, I actually don't see another thing that I can even do. So there's got to be something I can do. I can't imagine they actually want me to jump across this. Like, that premise confuses me. Wait. Oh, it was a timing thing. I had to throw it away at just the right moment. Okay. I'm actually really glad I figured that out. I can imagine myself being stumped there for a long time. Holy crap. Alright, is this another... Okay, so clock. We'll do the same thing again. Alright, there we go. And I fall off like an idiot. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna fall off a whole bunch. It's gonna take me a bit to get used to this. All right, input grounded. So if I jump, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because as I fall down, it loses its collision. I thought I saw something over the edge, so I checked. Okay. And I can't do an if not grounded. It doesn't give me that option. 
Oh, but what if I throw it away now? Now, okay. So they're trying to teach me, what they're doing is they're trying to teach me that things can be changed even after you throw away the programming. They don't always revert. That's very interesting. It's an interesting game mechanic. I like that. So we're going to have to do a scaling stretch object type dealio here. Alright, so multiply logic. Whoa. You know what? We'll work on this one next time. I feel like it's going to confuse the crap out of me. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this game. Uh, I understand if it may kind of confuse you. Well, it, it's not that it's confusing, but not being in the mind of the person who's playing may kind of make it confusing. Because I'm using logic that makes sense to me, but may not make sense to anyone else. So, uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I really hope this works out as a series. If it ends up being too weird, I may have to end it. But I'll see you guys next time.